Hello, everyone. IMS welcomes you all to Future You Set Your Career Compass Right with Experts Insight. And I'm Kalyani Machamda, your host for today's webinar. So today we will continue with our topic uh, with careers in human resources. And this is the second part. And we will be covering opportunities available in corporate HR with special focus on organizational development, which is OD. What is the role of an organizational development manager and many more aspects about HR and corporate HR specifically in this episode. So we have our speaker today, uh, Kiran B. Joseph. He's, on, uh, he's an organizational development manager with Zensor Technologies, an RPG group company. Kiran is an alumnus of Acceleri and is an experienced HR professional fulfilling the role of facilitating organizational improvement, including assessing learning needs, diagnosing organizational problem areas, consulting on organizational development strategies and conducting interventions. Prior to his job at Zensor Technologies, he has worked with Accenture. Welcome, Kiran B. Joseph. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kalyani. Uh, and I again apologize for the you know dingy aspect of the week. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, okay, so I'm on vacation uh, just for the sake of the participants. I'm on vacation, and uh, I mean, uh, right now since everybody's working from home, I'm <laughs> vacationing while in Kerala in the northern part of Kerala, remote uh, part of Kerala. Uh, right. So, uh, unfortunately, this was the only secluded place I could find. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, that's perfectly uh, fine. Can you take us through your career trajectory? Um, right from Accenture to Acceleri and then to Zensor Technologies. Okay, before coming to Accenture, I need to speak about, hey, how did I end up at Accenture, right? Okay. Uh, so uh, unfortunately, I mean, I don't know whether that's the case anymore. Uh, you know, uh, when, when during my 10th, like when you have to choose, like what career path you need to choose, uh, the kind of career choices which were available to me at that point of time was either medicine or engineering. So engineering seemed, engineering seemed like more fun. Uh, reason being that, okay, medicine, I would have, probably even if I'm able to crack it, I would have ended up studying for 10 years uh, to make a profession out of it. Right. Uh, so for all practical purposes, I thought engineering made sense probably because you don't have to study much and then, you know, can probably get a job. So without really understanding what engineering is all about, uh, you know, uh, the attempt to us, uh, like uh, most of us uh, would be doing, at least my peers did that uh, during that time. Uh, the idea was to get into the best colleges possible, like whatever you're, you're capable of, whatever, like, you know, put your best foot forward and, you know, try and getting it, get a shot at the best, best colleges in the country. Right. So, uh, exactly. Most people, I mean, I can see Arun, Arubinda, Mishra saying that most people do that. Yes. Yeah. And uh, uh, one more aspect is that once you come to corporate, you don't have to call anybody, sir. So my name is Kiran. Yeah. So you can all call me Kiran. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, and so for that reason, I uh, uh, fortunately got into a place, I mean, called NID Jalandhar. Uh, and uh, then once I got into engineering, I realized that, okay, engineering was not exactly uh, something that is that I'm made for. I mean, I did not find happiness in it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can actually clear engineering. It's not very difficult to pass engineering. So uh, you why, so kind of the attempt was to, okay, uh, let me finish this four years and then try doing something else. Mm -hmm. right? uh, did did attempt that at that point of time because I heard MBA was the next obvious choice if you don't know what to do. Mm. Uh, not knowing what an MBA is, but it just that it made sense because a lot of people were doing it. Uh, so did that did not do really well at all. I mean, I think I got around 40 percentile, uh, which is a very pathetic score. Uh, there was no preparation to it, but 40 percentile is still pretty bad, right? Uh, and then uh, then I did not. <laughs> Then I did not, uh, then I did not attempt, then I joined Accenture. Uh, so once you, I mean, it's again a campus placement, of course. Uh, I, was a computer, I was a computer science engineer. And so a lot of companies came, Accenture also came and got it by the virtue of, okay, just applying to it and, you know, clearing the interviews, et cetera. Uh, just went to the company without knowing what the business is all about. Once you went there, you realize that, okay, basically, you know, you are into this giant outsourcing industry uh, where your job exists because of the cost differential or the cost arbitrage, which is there between US, the cost of living in US is very high. Uh, so uh, any engineer over there has to be paid, uh, you know, much more than an engineer being paid in India. Uh, so that was the basic uh, the reason for my job's existence. I did not know it back then, but yeah, I was happy to get a job and do whatever they asked me to do. So I dabbled in something called as quality assurance, which is testing essentially. So if somebody develops a code, right? You have to, somebody has to test it. Uh, so the job is segmented in that way, right? Uh, I mean, it's called the assembly line methodology. Uh, you know, everybody does different, different parts of the job and uh, you get the work done. Uh, it, it was pretty good uh, in terms of I'm very happy. I was very happy because, you know, good timings, good company, good culture, right? Good processes. You have everything what is there around. Uh, but one, you got to get a promotion to, you, I mean, you get a second promotion to, 
by the time you get the second promotion that's when you realize that okay this does not make any sense this is not something that i want to do right i want to understand how people make money uh, uh, you know because i am fr- frankly making some money but not it's not enough to uh, satisfy my appetite of like you know probably the worldly pleasures you know a lot of people were traveling i did not have enough money to save travel you know spend everything at the same time so money was the primary motive of choosing uh, to do an mba uh, because i did not really know what an mba is all about uh, the attempt was purely at cracking the mba exams because that itself seemed to be a task right but interviews were were an afterthought uh, like cracking interviews uh, is a secondary step right first you have to crack uh, you know uh, the mba exams so i attempted i gave three attempts in total uh, back yeah. in 2012 13 and 14 i mean like no 11 12 13 mm-hmm. right? uh always scored a score about 99 uh, and you know uh, fortunately got called to xlr every time for the interviews but could crack it uh, both to uh, I mean, like prior two times as well yeah. for some reason so i don't know what happened uh, i mean pretty pretty random uh, you know they ask you very weird questions probably to test your metal or you know how you respond to difficult situations i have no idea i still have no clue uh, how i cracked it but uh, fortunately i cracked it in the third attempt uh, yeah and then i went to xlr okay. that when you know boom uh, wow excel was a completely different experience the reason okay. you get to meet uh, not primarily because of you know uh, you know why are all these colleges the best in the country reason being that you have the best uh, of india trying to go there right and okay. you that kind of diversity you know people are not engineers people more women of course you know and women who are really ambitious not the women like i'm sorry to say that but uh, you know a lot of my peers were you no know, not really interested in making career they were much interested in okay, probably studying but and then probably getting married off or something i mean that was the limit of their ambition but not here not here women competed uh, with men there was no real 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 big difference no nit did not have any diversity i'm so sorry Uh, when somebody is asking a question, that's the reason. That yeah, was, no, it's okay. Uh, so you can yeah. go on with your. Yeah. So NIT did not have any diversity. We'll out of six, yeah. Uh, yeah, out of sixty-two students in my class, we just had two women, and that's that, that, that took computer science engineering. So no, absolutely not, no diversity at all. Oh. Uh, at least at that point of time. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, and uh, Excel was a real, real life changer for me. My perspective grew. I understand. I understood what. am i doing there i mean what is an mba all about i mean practically it's about uh, it's about making money for others it's about managing stuff uh, you don't go to an mba school to start something new uh, i mean people have this uh, misconception i see this criticism of mba a um, lot of places that hey how many entrepreneurs have been created out of mm-hmm. that is not the purpose of an mba mm-hmm. the purpose of an mba purpose of an mba is to uh, obviously manage a business right? right have these people who are investors who would start a business i mean that is not prevent I mean, that and then you manage it for them you manage it professionally for them so i'll take you through that as well and as i take you through what an hr is all about probably i can speak more on that yeah. uh, uh so there is that and then uh, you know summer internships happen I mean excel is a crazy life and i believe all b schools are all top b schools have a crazy life you know you enjoy you study there are a lot of tears a lot of hard work a lot of disappointments but that's life right and then eventually uh, you get a job i mean the uh, the one of one thing that you know you always uh always no i i okay one thing i won't do is that i won't make comparisons between colleges sorry uh, so that's not that's not what i'm here for let me tell you something the best of the nmims would be better than the worst of the xlrs okay so that's how it is because it's after all after all it's one exam right you get into these colleges uh because of an exam and it's testing basic aptitude and english uh so on that day probably you might do really well and probably you won't do it really well uh Uh, so i will never say an xlr student is better than an mim student i found exceptional uh, people uh, from mim ranchi etc which is deemed to be uh, you know at least in the rankings not seem to be you know that better than xlr but uh, but i've seen i am ranchi students you know really excelling well in their careers better than i am ahmedabad students in my company i can take an example if i mm-hmm. so, so let's yeah, uh, yeah i mean sorry yeah. sorry to yeah, give you a very long answer yeah sorry So we'll take the questions in a bit. Uh, okay. If you can just yeah continue with your yeah. career trajectory. Yeah. So, so then, uh, then, then, uh, then uh, uh, yeah. once Excel, a uh, post Excel, uh, I did my summer internships in a company called Aquin. Uh, in Excel, R A, you don't get to. I mean, there is not a lot of choice for HR students. Uh, Up for general management goes, uh, you know, uh, in companies. There don't we don't get a lot of opportunities uh, to appear for general management companies, unless and until, of course, it's a consulting company like uh, you know the Bain, McKinsey, BCG, etc. 
all right uh, so abcg etc so uh, you do an internship obviously in hr most of us do an internship in an hr domain so i did an internship in recruitment at the domain of recruitment right with a company called aquen aquen financial services uh, uh, okay and then uh, uh, post that uh, uh, i got a placement with rpg so i've been in rpg uh, for the past 5 years right i started off in lnod uh lnod is about okay uh, that's where i need to i mean i don't want to really take it up yeah, right yeah, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. my job is all about yeah mm-hmm. yeah uh, yeah so that's it so i've been i've been in rpg for the past 5 years i joined their uh, group management program uh, which is uh, you know identifying top i mean i mean building it's about building the uh, future leaders i mean that's how the stated purpose of the program is and it's a wonderful program we uh, recruit from uh, you know iims ad c excel lucknow fms uh isb um yeah so um how about you know since you were talking about uh the roles and responsibilities for hr that you know you'll be mm-hmm. talking about so how about you know you just um tell us uh, as in what should someone strive to be when in hr excellent that's that's a brilliant question so first of all uh, you know the question is like okay kalyani i can if you do you mind if i ask you a question counter question what is in your mind that an hr does I mean, it, let's come. Let's come, you know dispel with all the questions <laughs> people have. What what does an HR do? Uh, uh, people management, looking people after. Management, yeah. yeah. Then of course you know yeah. uh, so, looking after talent acquisition. Excellent. Uh, yeah. These are like probably the top things that come in someone's comes mind. in your mind because you've yeah, been affected by all these things. Yes, exactly. An HR recruited you. Yeah. Uh, but probably. Then again, uh, if if you're talking about like learning and innovation bringing in some kind of development in the organization that's something that i would really like to know about because that's not something that we really get to hear much excellent in, yeah as in in hr as in right, uh, in corporate right, hr all right all right, all right. Uh, so let's begin with uh, let's begin with you starting a company i mean that's where everything happens right again as i mentioned mbas are to manage businesses it's called master of business administration anyway right so you're going to administer business but uh-huh. uh, you start a company uh, you don't need an hr let's say if it's a one man job let's say you start something let's say you start something on similar lines of ims the business is to uh, create i mean create value for students and how we're going to make money is imparting education students so that they can crack various entrance exams etc let's say that's the business they're going to start uh, you start a business and then you realize that you can't do it alone probably you start teaching yourself right at that point of time you don't need hr you don't need sales uh probably you do some uh, social marketing like you take it to instagram facebook and try uh, advertising it to your friends saying that hey this is the business that i'm going to start uh, i'm i'm uh, this is my credibility i've been uh, part of uh, and venerable institution like ims and i've been teaching out what not uh, and uh, these are my credentials like byju ravindra right byju ravindra everybody thought about byju ravindra yes yeah byju is cracked uh, you know apparently cracked cat like you know five times 100 percentile etc those right. so, uh i'm sorry to bring in a competitor by the way but theek hai but i thought let me explain the business anyway uh so you start a business and then you realize that okay for me to make more money i need to scale it up mm-hmm. right uh so then i should start recruiting more people so you don't again hire an hr or anybody uh, you hire more probably more teachers and later you hire and then you start growing the business then you realize that in order to reach more people you need more sales people right then you start hiring more sales people they reach out to people uh, you know we get more businesses as and when the business reaches a particular strength you realize that you can't do anything i mean idea about uh, i mean you you have you are the entrepreneur you are the one who is like uh, the creator of the business you're supposed to be the visionary you can't do all these jobs right you you don't want to pay i mean people are bugging you about you know hikes name mil raha salary name mil raha on time <laughs> payrolls are happening all that stuff you can't be bothered with such kind of stuff that's when you hire an hr right so in the beginning and i was listening to what basil said uh, you know uh, last time uh, yeah. in- just uh, interaction of hr right about what an hr career is all about right. you were speaking about compliance is obviously there are labor laws in this country mm-hmm. if you don't adhere to them you know you get a notice from the legal department saying that labor department saying that hey probably you're not you're violating some of the laws of the country while not ha- adhering to the best practices or the practices laid on the law so in the beginning hr is all about compliance right right so mm-hmm. hr you adhere to the labor laws uh, minimum wages all its stuff then it becomes then it comes to a po- point where that okay Uh, you have to manage your talent because you know you realize that your people that you are hired is really important and even if you let's say if somebody is dissatisfied dissatisfaction of your people would lead to reduction in pro- productivity of the company mm-hmm. right and uh, people if people leave the cost of replacement is very high right. if kalyani leaves kalyani has been with uh, ims for 2 3 years and kalyani leaves suddenly all of a sudden there should be a vacuum if there is no vacuum that's a that's a dangerous proportion right we should <laughs> be creating value for us it's right so i mean kalyani is important indispensable to the organization and suddenly if you leave uh, it's very difficult i'm not saying nobody is replaceable everybody is replaceable right but 
uh, there is a cost attached to your replacement oh. but you cannot afford to do that right the idea about hr practically speaking is that right uh, we, there are there are there is this uh, you know uh, principle i call the it's called the principal agent problem right we are all agents the principal is the one who invests money in the company right. probably you can say the founder the uh, shareholder i mean they are the principals right oh. uh, but we all have our self interest kalyani is interested in something right uh, you know you uh, where your career you see uh, you know in 10 years you want to be something else but right. the company wants to do something else as well yeah. Yeah. probably i mean if, if it would have been it would have been a perfect match had everybody's objectives match unfortunately in the real world that does not really happen okay. right you have your own ambitions uh, and the principal has their own ambitions like you know what they want you to do uh, so i always say that the role of the hr is to reduce this conflict between the principal and the hr the problem is very simple you can always google it it's called it's very famous as well it's called uh, the principal agent problem uh, right uh, so the principal agent problem resolve karna is the hr's job primarily okay right uh, uh, so there are different aspects to it uh, shall i take them take you through that yeah sure 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 i would like to share my screens if that's okay yeah you can share it yeah so this is the point the principal hires agents which are all of us mm-hmm. and the self interest attached to it but still Uh, you know we perform for the principal so idea of the hr is to make sure that okay that alignment happens hmm. right having said that okay this is what you spoke about there right. is this employee yeah. life cycle hmm. that an hr manages right. again but keeping in mind the principal agent problem mm-hmm. uh, i have to attract you saying that hey uh, let's say i am the hr for ims i have hmm. to attract alan like kalyani uh, into the organization you should have heard of this company hmm. right hmm. Uh, so that also comes under the preview of hr we right. something called as the employee value proposition you create ad campaigns you reach out i mean we have social digital media campaigns right now i mean right. whatever way possible uh, uh, you know i should be able to reach my talent uh, if i am limited to probably a particular territory i am losing out on talent right probably let's say zanzar i mean rpg is a mumbai based organization i studied in i mean i'm i was practically raised in kerala and then did my engineering in punjab and then went to uh, jamshedpur to do my right. yeah all right uh, so I, i should have at least heard of this company right otherwise i mean why would i join this organization mm-hmm. and once i join the company let's say i get attracted i join the organization because i fulfill all the criteria that hr has laid out then once i join the organization i should be assimilated to the organization right uh, because the company has a culture right so culture is simply let me put it in i mean uh, it's a very uh, nuanced definition but very let me put it in simple simpler terms culture is nothing but uh, doing i mean like the way of doing things in an organization mm-hmm. then our uh, uh, in our country has this culture it's the way things have been done so you have to be assimilated to, to the way things have been done that's also hr plus uh, a line manager responsibility line manager means people who are on the business side mm-hmm. and, uh, development now why is development important uh, kalyani the way i put it is that uh, i everybody wants the best person right mm-hmm. i mean like you want the best in the company but that's not practically possible right, right? go you make do with somebody who is there because you have a cost the best comes at a premium mm-hmm. so the idea is to hire somebody at a low cost and then probably improve their competencies capabilities etc right. so then i can make them better better and then make them deliver at that level that i am asking them for right. lower cost mm-hmm. again it's all about managing the cost and you know giving a better output all mbas do that right then you have managing performance obviously you have to weed out the bad performers mm-hmm. simply focus i have to understand who are my best performers right engage them uh, you know motivate them to stay in this organization mm-hmm. more incentive so that they stay so the focus of the hr uh, i mean i'm sorry to say this but focus of hr is always on the best performers uh, right. uh, we are not a uh, mbas are not a it's not a democracy it's not a i mean like i would call it a social socialistic enterprise Mm-hmm. Uh, you maybe it sounds nice okay okay if somebody is not doing well uh, the purpose of hr should be to bring them up absolutely not in this move in this world uh, i'm sorry sorry for going cut throat you give opportunities to people but if it doesn't doesn't happen you have to let people go because it could be the context i'm not saying people are bad but in this context of probably i don't well, let's say if i go into ims i may not do really well irrespective of how intelligent i am because intelligence got nothing to do with it i may not in the culture i may not understand the business there are a lot of things to it right, right. Uh, so then i have no choice but to you know ensure that okay this person gets another opportunity hmm. recognizing the people who are really good the, the focus of hr is always to retain motivate the best employees of the company uh-huh. build best better employees uh-huh. and once the person decides to leave obviously it has to be amicable because right. the chance that the person comes back if somebody is left on a sour note right there is this 
uh, you know, uh, word of mouth that goes on in the industry that this is how people are treated in this organization. And there is no incentive for people to come back. Mm -hmm. And this is a cycle. This is why it's called a cycle. You know, it keeps coming back. Right. It, uh, so, but uh, again, somebody was saying, hey, in 10 years, where you should be, 10 years, what do you see yourself? Mm -hmm. This is what a CHRO, which is the highest portion available in HR. Mm -hmm. you, don't see, you don't see a lot of people, uh, you know, moving from HR into business portions. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in, I mean, uh, like if you take statistics into account, uh, if you're interested in becoming the CEO of an organization, if you want to be the CEO, mm -hmm. uh, very few of us become the CEO. I mean, that's a practical reality. But I want to say ne never, uh, that is now never the case. Obviously, all, everybody can become the CEO, but you should have a business acumen. So that's why, I mean, I mean, I don't know, uh, this is a lot of jargon, maybe, maybe to a lot of people, uh, but this is what the CHRO does. You have to ultimately drive business results. For that, you need to understand business. You need to understand what is the strategy of the business, right? And you should, uh, you know, you should create a very good HR team who does all the activities which are given about. So uh, uh, the activities are, you know, one is, Obviously, ensuring that okay, CEO is we hire a proper CEO and a proper suction plan. If the CEO decides to leave, right, it's difficult, right? Mm -hmm. You have, to, I, mean, I mean, replacing the CEO becomes very important. So, exceed a compensation. Okay, if something is happening externally, like the pandemic, pandemic is the best example, right? right. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it depends on the uh, it depends on the metal of the HR, how different companies reacted uh, to the uh, you know pandemic. Correct. Uh, you saw any company uh, reacting without any loss of business, saying. Mm -hmm. Okay. immediately everybody went to work from home and there was no loss of productivity that means they have a very good HR practice right because it's not difficult it's very difficult to pivot i mean pivot immediately into a new different different way of working so if your hr process are very robust and very strong it's easier for to do that and that's what an hr process person does you know think about different scenarios all these aspects of an employee how how can we do better what could be the different situation that affect them and make strategies and plans in accordance to that Right, that's what uh, that's what an HR does. Now coming to OD, uh, you don't yeah, get yeah. hired into an OD out of B school. Uh, organization development consultant, the word consultant is there. Right? And what does a consultant do? Uh, practically solves problems for people. Uh, and uh, okay, now comes the question: uh, What is HR? Right? HR. I mean, I've showed you what an HR does. So mm -hmm. human resources, nothing but practical application of uh, behavioral sciences. Mm -hmm. Essentially, uh, an HR person would re do really well if the person has a psychology background. Okay. Because it's application, it's applied psychology at the end of the day. Mm. You have, so in, in XLR, I can talk about XLR. I'm pretty sure it's the case with TIS and other HR codes as well. Mm. Uh, you would learn about OB1, Organization Behavior 1, where you focus on self, which is mm. me as an individual, as a person. Uh, you know, what are my motivation? What is motivation? Uh, what are different theories of motivation? How do I get motivated? Uh, what is this construct of self, attitude, etc.? Things like that. Then you later move on to teams and later move on to organization. Okay. OD I would define as you know uh, you know a, a consultant who uses psychology or I would say behavioral sciences to solve various problems in the organization. All right. Okay. A anything else that? So uh, yeah. So the thing is, uh, can you also tell us the precise difference between human resources and organizational development? What's the what, what's the difference? So are these two? Okay, okay. So yeah, you saw the different aspects of employee yes, life cycle, yeah, right? Yeah, uh, sure. So there are uh, different, uh, I would say, uh, specialists who take apart all the uh, life, uh, different aspects of life cycle. For example, recruitment is usually, usually handled by a team called talent acquisition. Mm. Uh, so though, I mean, I mean, and there is a certain skill set which goes into talent acquisition as well. You need to understand what kind of roles are there in the organization. Okay. Right? And you need to understand what kind of person this person is. And you need to ensure a map. Mm -hmm. uh, so they enter a match, and so that that def, that itself becomes a difficult proposition because interviewing is exa I mean, it's it's actually a pretty very good skill, even though people might not realize that right. interviewing a person properly, understanding the person's competency, whether it's matching to a particular comp, uh, you know, something that is a uh, company is looking for, is a special competency. Mm -hmm. So in the life cycle, OD does not play anywhere. So OD, uh, 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 let me tell you the th kind of things that I build. So in, in so uh, as an OD consultant, you mm -hmm. get into different different aspects of the employee life cycle and solves different problems for them. Hmm. Uh, for example, in talent acquisition, in, uh, in my company, I help them create a value proposition, employee value proposition to hire. That means simply means that, okay, it was like an ad campaign uh, to uh, you know attract talent. Basically we hmm. say, if you come to join our organization, we are going to give you all these things. This hmm. is a place where you, know, you probably can grow really well, own, achieve, learn. And then various aspects of the campaign was designed by me. So similarly, different functions, when they have different special initiatives, uh, you know, I come on board. Hmm. 
Right. Company decides to uh, uh, make a pivot and say, uh, you know, uh, there's I don't know whether you heard of this term called change management. Let's say the new change is happening in a company. Hmm. You cannot simply enforce that change down people's throat. No, that's not how it happens. Okay. Uh, it has to be managed. Uh, you know, it has to be uh, it has to be uh, given to people in a gradual way so that they are more accepting. Hmm. Otherwise, the change fails. So uh, I would define an organization development consultant as somebody who manages change in the organization. Mm. Uh, again, I hope I'm pretty so, clear. Or so, do I need to elaborate more? Yeah. So the thing is, uh, but then how different are these two? Uh, I mean, you usually see a lot of articles are there about you know human resources and organizational development. So okay. It's like, but they are kind of overlapping. So are these really overlapping? And if they are, they do, they do. Okay. Uh, you need to understand. You need to understand. You need to be a proper, fully blooded HR professional. Okay. Be consultant. All because, right. Okay. Uh, practically, you're getting into all spheres of HR, right? right? So you need to understand every aspect of what an HR does. Hmm. Uh, when you okay, in typical parlance, when you speak about HR, uh, hmm. those are the ones who you know you go to grievances to solve your grievances right mm-hmm. let's say your leave application proper nahi hua uh, you know your pay is not getting proper etc so those are only the transactional parts of hr okay. so if you get into a b school like excel this etc while mm-hmm. there will be transactions you will be more uh, you know you uh, you are asked to your focus I mean the idea about recruiting from all these b schools is that uh, you come and uh, you know create initiatives which uh, you know uh, involve thought etc so that then you would implement them implementation uh, usually uh, is not done by uh, uh, you know uh, i mean uh, odp od consultants mm. done by uh, you know the different uh, hr practitioners which are out there uh, so the thing is like how exactly um, what kind of career progression one should expect from entry level to senior level in corporate hrm and if mm-hmm. they would like to get into organizational development Okay. Uh, how do they do that what is the what is the trajectory for that sure uh, okay um, when you join hr uh, as an hr hmm. on practical all practical purposes you will be asked to be a line hr or hr business partner hmm. or like basil said plant hr where uh, you have to deal with the problems of the employees yeah. you have to speak to them so that's uh, it's to develop that context hmm. once you build that context you would be moved into ideally you should move into a coe role which is a center of expertise role a center of uh, this is uh, for corporate hr you are talking corporate about corporate hr yes so yeah. send, uh, all these things talent acquisition mm. uh, you know uh, learning and development uh, then uh, rewards and recognition total rewards uh, where which involves compensation benefits these are called coes of the coes of hr mm. uh, so ideally you have to have sense there and then once you gain an all round as perspective that's when you become an you know ideally you become an od practitioner mm-hmm. and you need you need to you need your exposure into all practical aspects of hr once you have done that and talking about the career aspiration i told you the one slide i was showing you was the ultimate uh, position in hr which is the chief human resource officer right which is yeah. considered to be the uh, you know highest position in hr okay uh, so uh, that probably it mean, depends on the organization let's say if it's a big established organization mm-hmm. probably 10 15 years you can be 10 10 12 years you can be the chr if you're really well if you perform really well and you know you're one of the best performers in the company you can reach that stage or otherwise if you join a startup you can you can be an chr in no time let's say within 2 okay. 3 years okay okay so let's uh, take few questions um so this is a question that uh, even i wanted to ask um is xlri hr women dominant cuz corporate companies since you were talking about xlri and women so oh, yeah? uh, this question is from there as in is it because uh, companies corporate companies prefer working with women in hr and does men fall behind by choosing hr as a career option this is something even i wanted to ask yeah not really not really uh, yes. uh, for all despite the fact that i mean let me come to the okay this is kind of one of those myths that you could probably debunk <laughs> yeah 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 let me let me let me dispel that myth yeah. no absolutely not uh, this my chr is a man uh, mm. Uh, and my boss is a man so uh, all I'm talking to one <laughs> yeah you're talking to one yeah uh, no uh, that is a myth i mean uh, 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 to be very frank uh, while there is a lot of focus on i mean uh, now first comes to the question is diversity really important i really think so uh, reason being i mean i'm not talking about women in general but right. in terms of any diversity right. it's gender diversity alone that we should look for uh, but diversity in language diversity in probably race diversity in culture uh, everything's going to help because you know different people have so i would always request you to get out of your home state and go travel to other states of the country please mm-hmm. you get an option to you know study outside your state and if it's a better college please always choose to do so because india is such a you know large india is a diverse place in itself 
right? Uh, so diversity kind of opens up your mind, uh, right? You understand there is this different perspective than that I have. I am limited by my experience and my exposure. I lived in Kerala, right? I lived in a particular, uh, you know, social society, you know, where there is this thinking by kind of thought process, uh, you know, uh, etc. Then I went to Punjab, which had a different kind of culture. Right. I mean, that kind of makes you look right. Okay, probably this is not, there is no <laughs> right or wrong. The definition of what is right and what is wrong kind of gets enlarged, right? Yeah. Yeah. Much more open. Uh, and that openness is very important for a company to perform because ideas, let's say new innovation, mm -hmm. can only happen when you open your mind. Right. So that is the first question. Diversity is important. Yeah. Yes. Since diversity is important, then people take special opportunity because of our social structure, mm -hmm. right? Where women are not really encouraged to work, we should incentivize uh, people so that they can come on board. So mm -hmm. hence, yes, there is this, if you are a woman, who's smart. I mean, if you are not so smart woman, obviously uh, you're not going to make it. But if you are a woman who's smart, you may get an advantage. But that is not at the cost of a male candidate. Absolutely not. Yeah. Right? That's what I'm saying. In XLRI, you have competent women. Right. And you don't feel sad. Well, obviously you will be disappointed if you lose out an opportunity. Right. But you wouldn't feel as if like you were robbed of that opportunity. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. That was the question. Right. Do you feel as if like you've been robbed of your opportunity because of your gender? No. no. That won't happen. But obviously there will be grumbling, yeah, nee, yeah, they have it easy and etc. Yeah. Because that's part and parcel of life, right? That's okay. <laughs> okay. Very well. But Excel, Excel <laughs> test is a wonderful place. You will never feel as if like you've been discriminated against. Right. Uh, but uh, uh, again, but 50% is yada is again men. Uh, mm -hmm. Despite the fact that HR is considered uh, soft option, etc. Uh, you know, and you know, women, nothing of that sort. I have women uh, in other streams of uh, MBA as well who do quite well. Some of them are quite more intelligent than me. I don't have any problem saying that, you know, uh, some of them are really, really smart, right? And you get, I mean, you get a, I mean, you might have been the best out there. And when you go to this place, you realize that there are better people out there, right? Correct. And uh, that, I mean, you can, there, is, there are two ways of looking at it. Probably you can say, oh my God, there are better people. So I need to perform really well. I need to work harder. Or you can say, grumble and stay back, say that, nee, theke, what can you do? <laughs> Okay. Um, okay. Another question. Uh, so what's your view about HR consultant and what's, what a person can expect as a salary for HR? Yeah. Okay. Um, you could give it like a, a very uh, difficult question. Very, to answer. Yeah, so if yeah. you come into Excel or TIS for that matter, uh, uh, you know, uh, that's because those are the colleges I am pretty sure about. You would get a salary on somewhere on par with the business management students, right? But let's say you get a I mean, that's where, I mean, you have to come out of this mentality of salary, kaise hoga, et cetera. Mm -hmm. In X, okay, let's say you are an HR professional. I already mentioned to you, right? Uh, your chance of becoming a CEO, CEO is the highest paid person right. in an organization, usually. Mm -hmm. Chance of becoming a CEO is much more lesser. Mm -hmm. and you have to take that special extra attention, focus. You have to work hard, do different stints in business as well. Prove your metal that you can prove, uh, you can, you know, you, you can, you're an all-round, well-rounded person and you can function really well in other aspects of the company because CEO really needs to know everything, right? Uh, need acquainted with everything at least. Uh, so uh, as your career goes, probably your salary would take a step back because let's say sales, let's take sales as an example. A business management student who goes into sales, Right, uh, we'll always have a variable, something concept called as variable pay. There'll be a fixed salary, of course, but there'll be a variable component variable, dependent yeah. on your performance. Mm -hmm. Let's say you sell more, you get more income, right? So the I mean, it's like a commission-based uh, incentive. So if you are really good and if you can sell really well in your first year itself, you can probably make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. That won't be the case in HR. In HR, you have to build credibility. Uh, you have to showcase your good and probably takes a, a good number of years to get a good salary. Uh, I would request you to, uh, you know, open up any company annual report. Uh, just, uh, you know, uh, okay. Uh, any listed company in India or for that matter in the world have to, you know, shell out these annual reports. Okay. If you look at the annual reports, you get to see the salary of every top executives of the organization. Ka salary aapko mil jayega. Mm. So if you go and take a look at that, you will understand what the HR person, CHRO salary is. Because HRO is a key management personnel and the, the salary is quite uh, quite in the same ballpark as the rest of the people. So uh, there is no such uh, problem. If you are, uh, uh, you know, uh, an XA, I mean, uh, HR from XLRA and TIS, other colleges, sorry, I, I don't really know whether that's the pay bracket that other people look at. I think SEMHRD is also on part. Mm -hmm. I think NMMI is, uh, is, I'm pretty sure. Uh, mm -hmm. rest Colleges are not really, really sure. But when we recruit, hmm. RPG as a company is recruiting from various campuses, we don't discriminate. Right. At least at the entry level, no, there's no discrimination. Uh, can HR of a company become VP? 
if yes then what's the comment yeah, definitely why not yeah. a chro is usually a vp or an svp no okay. but again the number of positions open because of the fact that uh, so okay let's let's put it this way kalyani uh, i am an hr so hr and uh, finance etc are called business enabling functions you enable businesses to work but let's say somebody is their person who is bringing in revenue that is very practically visible so that person is bound to get more recognition that's okay. practical reality of life right. so if you have uh, what i call is uh, an extrinsic uh, lever of motivation if you are only motivated by extrinsic rewards okay. and not intrinsically rewarded say you are not uh, self motivated right but you want perks outside you want higher salary uh, you want a uh, higher recognition faster promotions mm. uh, you know you want people to know that you are an ace uh, you know great uh, well, like then uh, i would not recommend uh, hr to you but if you are self motivated right you are you have a goal you satisfy the goal and people important realize your value probably you know, it's not advertised so much but mm. probably hr circles etc you are valued you are a valued person mm. and that kind of competencies will be because hr is a very close knit community Mm -hmm. very uh, lot lot of people involved uh, so uh, the top hr people kind of know each other i mean that's been my experience i am i'm not reached the top hr place so i don't know a lot of people but um, i've seen it from my chr and people who are really important really good really competent they know a lot of people and everybody knows uh, i mean like you know and it's easy for them to understand whether somebody is good let's say okay uh, let's say kiran applies to a different company mm -hmm. and uh, the chr of there can easily call this person and say ask hey how is this guy is he good and they would, they would say no yes if he is good he is good otherwise he is not good mm. kind of network close knit it's a close knit community and so yeah again a yeah, long winded yeah. answer but yes yeah no yes yeah um there's a question uh, i'm someone who is really interested in human behavioral psychology is there a particular specialization in hr i should target yeah aha yeah, uh -huh. yes if you are interested in human behavior psychology right and if you are not really interested in counseling people and you know, uh, probably going on to the side of psychiatry etc or uh, or counseling then hr is a career for you i mean i would recommend that you take up hr hr is uh, probably and you, you would you would gain a lot of perspective right obviously you're going to be uh, let's say you come to a b school you're going to be mixed with these students who have not taken up psychology uh, so you have a difficulty in terms of mathematical aptitude etc but nothing cannot be i'm not saying i mean nothing cannot be overcome without hard work right you'll have to work a bit hard in when it comes to finance etc courses like that but hr is going to be a breeze for you mm -hmm. and enjoy your career if yeah. you are uh, if you understand psychology if you believe in psychology if you believe that people can change that is the fundamental reason i forgot uh, where the fundamental aspect of hr is that you need to believe that people can really change mm -hmm. uh, if you think that people are fixated and people mm -hmm. can never change then there is no point of hr Right, okay. you only have to do is hire the right person, mm. and then they stay in the same way for life, right? But people change. People have different motivation. Using their motivations, you can make them do different things. Uh, I wouldn't call the term manipulation, but mm. if you can make them <laughs> align <laughs> to your objectives, I mean, you become a very good HR. Mm. Right. What are the three soft skills and three hard skills that an HR professional? Yeah, HR is a place where kind of your soft skills and hard skills kind of kind of merge together, uh, because you need to be empathetic, you need to be an active listener, mm -hmm. right? Uh, uh, because these are the skills which require for a consultant. So right. you listen to somebody's problem, you understand the context of the problem, then only you can give solutions. Right. Now, what do you consult? And then it becomes really important that okay, you have a active consulting mindset. Mm -hmm. so consulting is not about giving solutions alone. Uh, it's about really listening to really actively listening to people, understanding their context, right? Putting yourself in the context and then try to figure out a solution, right? Uh, uh, so uh, as a hard skill for any MBA, HR, including HR, okay. Excel is a must. Microsoft Excel is the bible, okay. right? You need to be has a hard skill. That's where you know. I mean, the way I define hard skill is hard skill is something you can measure. Yeah. Can measure somebody's yeah. competency. Soft yeah. skill is like an a quality. It's more like an quality. Uh, yeah. So, uh, if you want to make it in HR, uh, you need to be really, uh, or any other MBA for that matter. It will be great if you can, uh, if you are really good at Excel, Microsoft Excel, or any such analytical tool. But mostly, it's Excel. Everybody works on Excel. Okay. That's one. Uh, definitely, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, consulting, developing a consulting mindset, which includes listening. Uh, you know, uh, pro something called as process consulting. I mean, that's yeah. that's a capability which is required. Uh, you know, if you want to be an OD consultant. Uh, otherwise let's say a uh, facilitation skills where you know uh, i mean not like comparing exactly but your ability to impart knowledge uh, you know uh, i mean when i call it facilitation it's not exactly like a teacher student relationship but mm -hmm. what i mean is that okay you bring together a lot of people 
uh, uh, ensure that a healthy facilitate a healthy discussion uh, mm-hmm. in a directed manner so that you know they come up with a solution themselves like something like coaching and then uh, you know the group learns out of it that's mm-hmm. a very important skill to have in hr you need to be a very good facilitator okay. uh, uh, then soft skills obviously you need to be mm-hmm. really good uh, it helps if you are uh, Uh, you know, uh, I'm not an introvert, but an extrovert. Uh, it really helps. Yeah, um, yeah I've heard it. this a lot. So people, is it uh, really relevant? I've heard not really, not a lot. really, not really. But uh, it gives you a career of Philip, right? Uh, because you are this bubbly person who goes around, talks to people, oh. you would get more visibility. But then again, uh, but an introvert usually has that one particular skill that you know they really no, no. observe, so they no, know more saying, about. I'm not. I'm not saying that introverts yeah. cannot make it. No, absolutely not. Uh, right? But extrovert is being extrovert. Uh, easy thing. Easier thing to do. Mm-hmm. So okay, uh, let's take some questions. Uh, uh, growth. Oh my God, in, some very hard questions. Yeah, growth in HR. Like yeah, growth in HR is more progressive. And which type of companies? FMCG, IT, or consultancy companies? Okay. Okay. Let's let's uh, uh, FMCG IT consulting, right? Yeah. Uh, most progressive would be definitely be uh, consulting. Uh, most pro- progressive would definitely be consulting because they have they have to they have no choice but to respond to the latest trends in the uh, environment. You know, they uh, because they are the ones who come up with all these creative solutions. The best best practices of the world. Uh, I mean, they are the ones who have an influence. Then comes IT companies. I would not say FMCGs are at least in the corporate sector. FMCGs, uh, you know, are pretty progressive. But FMCGs have a manufacturing component as well, mm. right? So, I mean, manufacturing, uh, uh, you know, probably because of the generational gap, and still there are a lot of old people around. Sorry for saying that, but uh, uh, so it's difficult. It's a bit difficult for uh, uh, you know. I mean, there are not. I mean, there are. There is obviously a progression happening everywhere, but it's little less progressive. I mean, again, it's my view. I've never worked in FMCG company. Just. Uh, coming from what others have said, so it, I could be wrong as well. But in my mind, consulting comes first in terms of progressiveness. Let's take that question. Uh, Work-life EQ, balance. Yeah, yeah. You know, proportion of EQ, IQ, and SQ required for a role. I of don't. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm so sorry. I don't know how to answer that question. Uh, obviously, your EQ, you should have really good EQ. Yes, right? Yeah. Uh, and IQ, yeah. I, said, I mean, ideally, one should. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Ideally, uh, for any role, one should. But in HR, since you are uh, okay, HR. Okay, there are two ways of going about it. As in HR, you can probably side with the business, right? And always say whatever CEO is ne kisi ne bataya or business decide kia uh, this thing, and then you can go and implement it. You can be that, or you can be like a socialist. Uh, have a socialist bent up and always side on the side of employees, right? right. Because, I mean, like I said, it's a principal agent problem, right? And you're trying to solve that conflict. The best HR, according to me, kind of balances both. Okay. Something which is good for business, and you understand something which is good for employees, and try kind of you know come to a consensus where you know which can which you can make it work. Right. Because, uh, a, a business side may look at it from the short term angle, mm. right? And uh, employees may also look at it in the short term angle. But for the long term, if say let's say if you take a hard decision to let go of a lot of people at mm. a go. Right. Uh, kind of, it's difficult to bring back trust in people. Let's say if you are a, a firing company at the first probable chance, mm-hmm. right? They'll be reluctant to join you, and there will be no commitment, no loyalty. Right. So uh, again, uh, uh, again, so uh, the idea is that uh, as an HR person, a very good HR person, you need to balance both. Obviously, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, you must understand you are an MBA. Mm-hmm. Idea is to you have to make profits for the organization. Otherwise, there is no value for this role or any other MBA role for that matter. Okay. Right? So that is always there. But you need to consider uh, emotional angle, and you know, uh, as there is there is this uh, angle of uh, you know, uh, you know, there are people's lives that you are you know, you cannot play with that, right? Exactly. So there is a balance that you need to find out. Correct. Again, uh, I would not exactly give a forty thirty thirty ratio, okay. but uh, but it's equally important. You need to have if you have a good IQ, you would be known for your credibility. If you have good EQ, obviously you would be well respected in the organization. If you have a SQ, you would be very well liked. So now comes to the question: What do you want? Do you want to be very well respected? Uh, do you want to be known as a very smart chap, somebody who's known for his chops, intelligence, or his or her chops, or do you want to be very friendly, likable? So okay. it's, if you want to be all three, please, you're welcome to do this. Yeah. Okay. Q is somebody's asking a question. Social question. Yeah. I mean. I yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um. After four years, uh, work ex in IT sector, can I get into MBA in HR? Okay. Uh, for, yes, you can. Hmm. But uh, the practical. Let me come to the practical problems as well. Hmm. Right. Uh, 
uh, in India. Okay. Uh, I mean, t- when I did my MBA, hmm. experience, jada work experience was kind of uh, detrimental to you know get up, you know, hmm. consider by really good companies. Correct. Yeah. I mean, I don't know why, but bahar it's a difference. Yeah, bahar. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's the other way around. To- actually, they prefer. Five to yeah, they prefer. They prefer. Yeah. Yeah, so, but uh, Ro- I think Ronak is the one who answered that que- asked the question. But Ronak, no, I have three and a half years of work experience. I have people who have five, six years of work experience. Work experience. It doesn't matter. Not that much. But you would uh, face some difficulties in terms of uh, you know there there will be some companies who would prefer freshers, etc. Right. Uh, but yeah, uh, but that's because of uh, probably their experience. Uh, freshers tend to stick around for a long time. you can mold them easily because probably after 4 5 years of experience i would have my own way of working i would have my own preferences etc and probably i'm more adamant i mean that could be the idea mm-hmm. there are a lot of companies who don't uh, think about such kind of things right. and uh, recruit you anyway so excellent is all these com- ka- ka- organize me like anyway colleges boast about 100% right. true i mean to um, my practical knowledge at least in my year subsequent mm-hmm. years junior years uh, you know yes How okay uh this for this, hr no you can't really because you know, yeah there is a there is a question um, how is the work life balance in hr role and also is the career in hr less competitive as compared to other jobs this is something that i've heard a lot from lot is it okay i mean, I, i understand that's, that's yeah. the reason i chose hr also right uh, not work life balance <laughs> but, but uh, there are not many colleges that give you premium mbas in hr okay uh, so let's say uh, because there are a lot of these iims out there right so you are competing with let's say you are a general management student you are competing competing with everybody out there right you are competing with the im a b c uh, people from excel uh, you know fms all these colleges right uh, so uh, when it came to the choice obviously i mean i did not get into abc so then it would have been a much more difficult choice uh, but uh, um, compared with excel spj and uh, you know uh, iift etc all these colleges i got uh, an xlr bm i really wanted to do hr Uh, because then i would be i belong to that you know it would be easier for me to make a name because that uh, college ka brand value is there and then hr at least in hr fraternity xlra holds a very good premium right so that it makes my uh, life much more easier so mm-hmm. it it uh, breaks down a lot of barriers people irrespective let's say if a job advertises 10 15 years of experience mm-hmm. even with 5 years of experience i get a call for that mm-hmm. job opportunity okay because of this brand Mm-hmm. still holds to i mean they don't look at your marks etc they just see that okay you're coming from this college okay obviously the obviously you have to crack the interview prove yourself okay. that all goes without saying yes life work life balance no not really uh, not different because uh, the number of hr the ratio of hr in a company uh, with respect to i don't know uh, how it is in ims i don't know how many hr is there but for, for entire ims probably there would be 3 4 5 6 hr maybe okay. so that kind of takes the stem out of the work life balance correct right uh, so if you had <laughs> then it would have been much more easier but that's not the case the reason why you get a premium you get paid premium by, you know being from excel to cmh mm-hmm. all these things etc right. uh, the understanding that you can work more okay uh, to ensure but you have to ensure that other people have a work life balance mm. one of the responsibilities of <laughs> yeah if you if you don't have a good life work life balance uh, kalyani probably you should complain to hr <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah. yeah for that Okay, there so, is no HR course in IFT, as far as I know. Yeah. How can one improve? So this is a profile building question. How okay. can one improve his profile while doing his MBA from Accelerai or TIS, which have hectic schedule? I uh, okay. Uh, hmm. The reason why Accelerai and TIS have hectic schedules is not alone due to the fact that okay, you have a lot of classes. No, absolutely not. Uh, the reason you are building profile schedules. basically yeah <laughs> it's because you are building your profile yes so you have these activities you have these clubs uh, for example there is something like forum for industrial relationship which is called firex then you have safire which is society for promoting human resources etc uh, you have these clubs you have these case study competitions you have these engagement activities various clients various companies right uh, you know which you know gives you uh, live live problem statements to work on etc so that is why you have a hectic schedule it's not because of the class alone class is pretty much a breeze right uh, because uh, uh, you know you go to a class uh, it's your choice whether you want to listen or not nobody is going to uh, you know make you sit and if you can you have uh, at least in excel you have a 75% attendance criteria so 25% of the classes you can bunk as well right and some professors don't even take attendance because attendance <laughs> okay. people come to their classes because of the value inherent value that is there in their class so lesser yeah. professors can afford to 
not not take attendance because people come because of the virtue of their class not because of gaining attendance okay. so yeah you become your uh, choice is yours mm-hmm. if you want to make a good profile you will you will have a hectic life and you enjoy it i mean mm-hmm. what is the point of spending 20 25 lakhs and going to this vacation it's not a i mean you can't make it an expensive vacation right you're there to build your career so mm-hmm. uh, hectic schedule will, will make your profile okay okay at least if it's not let's say first year may you didn't have a profile and you did not get a good summer internship okay. opportunity one one and a half years may you will know what is to be done to make a good profile and i'm guaranteeing you you will get uh, you know a good opportunity okay. let's say you want to study you are not interested in pursuing all other activities all these consulting companies come after all these great people who have academics background you need to have a good academics background if you want to cons- cut it to consulting because you know the idea is that okay in consulting you are made to work so hard that i mean you have should that have have that habit of working hard so oh. they 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 take a marks as a proxy for hard work oh. i mean of them at least okay. obviously it helps in addition to hard work if you have other aspects of your profile as well which is you know which shows you that you are a leader that you can you contested elections and you won elections and then you run a club you do other activities as well a- along with studies you are a shoe in for the best companies of the organization i mean like it comes to an exit or it is for that matter mm mm-hmm. Profile, um, you can build it over there yeah just last two questions um yep. before we wrap up being an engineer how can one justify an interview that he or she will be a good hr professional okay let me let me flip this question for you being an engineer then how can one even uh, you know justify uh, for any other mba stream as well absolutely mm-hmm. not right i mean the justification is that hey i realize that okay what is an mba for i mean you are more interested in the business aspect let's take my ex case as well Uh, if i had continued in it i would have to build up my technical acumen uh, mm-hmm. right uh, you know technical capability in something and then uh, you know uh, uh, continue the my course there i become project manager team lead but my frame of mind is completely in delivering a project i mean mm-hmm. i'm speaking from it mm-hmm. right i'm not really looking at the business side of things where is revenue come from margin coming from etc uh, but if you i mean uh, again in uh, you know an it company if you look at the ceo and you know one down two downs of a ceo they are the people who actually bring in business oh. so ends mba i want to be you know very well rounded position to my experience of you know whatever i did let's say i have a work profile in it it should help now i understand the practical realities of how a project is delivered but yeah. now I'm interested in delivering value because that's the way to go up mm-hmm. and mba was to was a way to go up right i wanted to I mean, that was my need but mm-hmm. different people may have different needs if yeah. you want more money be practical about it we can be right. very brutally honest about it you don't have to lie you can mm-hmm. say i want to make more money i want to be an investment banker which gives me or probably gives me no work life balance but you know gives me 70 lakhs or 80 lakhs per annum i create right. a lot of money so a lot of people have that interest somebody wants to make money right mm-hmm. I mean, uh, it's nothing to be. I mean, that's why I'm saying there is nothing good or bad, right? Uh, it's your choice at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. So, is the uh, last question? Is there a scope of changing preference from BM to HR no, during the HR interview? Oh. No. Oh, okay. No, you because you get a call for an XLR HR interview and you get a call for XLR BM interview. Okay. But as you get into, let's say you get into a BM course, mm-hmm. uh, probably after your first year, depending on the kind of courses that you course uh, choose, uh, you get. a strategy a double a kind of like a double specialization mm. uh, you can choose up to two specialized strategy operations uh, you know finance uh, etc but you don't get to choose hr there also hr is hr oh, uh, yeah you. that's all we have time for thank you thank you kalyani to you before we wrap up i would like to thank all the attendees and special thanks to our speaker kiran joseph yeah. for answering many difficult questions and giving <laughs> us such insightful answers on the topic thank yeah. you for this opportunity wishing you all a great weekend